the most important thing in this walk with God is the divine ability to say it and it happens. I'm so happy to be with you this evening. There is a spirit of restoration that I've been sensing so strong that God is releasing in this time for our families. You know, families are God's greatest opportunity for this earth. It's through the family that the presence of God is released. It's through the family that the lineage, the offspring, an expression of God comes through our families. And so the enemy hates your family, my family, and every family of the earth. I'm Roger Goinsby here on Family Restored. I'm going to be sharing with you some things that God has deposited in me to share with you. Many of you are going to receive a tremendous insight into your why. You know, so many of us ask, why this? Why that? Why am I in the place that I'm in? Why did this happen to me when I was young? Why did my mother give me away? Why did my father give me away? Why did I experience pain like I have experienced? Well, I want you to know that I know what pain is. I know what it is to lose a son to death. I know what it is for the enemy to attack. I know what it is to be delivered from a car accident where I left here and God brought me back. I know what it is to experience rejection. I know what it is to experience divorce. I know what it is to experience uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, I'm coming to you not in my name, but in the name of Yah, in the name of our God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is releasing many of you from a religious spirit. Even in churches, many are yet bound. But I want you to know that there is a release in this time of, of things that God wants to get to us. And God will use different ones at different times. You know, he always raises up his generals and and pandemics and and pestilence and he always uh changed the guards if you will and there's a changing of the guards there is a new leadership on the horizon i believe right now that as the spirit of god is moving in your homes you might have a loved one that have experienced uh, uh turmoil and and, and someone that is experiencing an illness due to a, this pandemic, I want you to know there is no name that is greater than our God. The name of Jesus, the real Jesus, the authentic Jesus. You know, the word says there's many that are going to come in my name declaring that I am Christ. I am the sent one. I am the anointed one. Many are going to uh, claim to be chosen, but you will know someone that is chosen for your life because God will use them to reveal things that he has already put inside you. You know, oftentimes I think about a well digger. You know, there's, there's things in our earthen vessels that has been hid. Many of you have things that God has put inside you that has been hidden. It's been hidden for years. It's been hidden even in your parents. It's been hidden for generations. I believe that generations before you and I, there is something that God is releasing, mantles that God is releasing. And you may be one of those. I believe that here on Family Restored, that, that, that somehow God has uh, opened up this global door so that I will share to you things that God has put in my spirit 
and waiting on my ministry for over 40 years. God is saying now is the time when I'm going to release. I'm no greater than anyone else. I esteem others higher than myself. But I do know that God has sent me to you. Many people that God has sent, they have made merchandise out of the fact that God sent them. And they have um, uh, put a price on what God has given them to do. He's not given me that. You know, there was a prophet that went to a widow and said, bake me a cake. And the woman in her household received miracles. Many have taken that and said, uh, give me some money. Give me uh, an offering because I've been sent to you. Well, I come to say I rebuke that because it's not of God. Now, there was a man in the book of Acts he wanted to purchase what he saw the apostles operating in. He saw it as a moneymaker. He wanted to purchase the gifts of the Holy Ghost. He wanted to be used. He saw some way he could market God. Many have marketed God. Many have marketed uh, uh, gifts and, 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 th and anointings and unctions that God has given you know, the word says that God has given every man the measure, not a measure, but the measure of faith. Here on Family Restored, I want to show you how the enemy has brought strife between your loved ones. He has brought envy in your families. He has brought hearsay in our families. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that there's a remedy. The word says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity is not something that you could manufacture or make up or, or pretend to have. You know, you could sit in church and say amen to the truth and you can have a praise break. But there's a release in this time for God's people to break from traditions. You know, Mark 7 and 13 says, making traditions, making the word of God of none effect through traditions. Traditions will keep God out and keep man in. You know, in the times of Moses, Manna came down from heaven and the people were able to feed and receive food from manna. Christ came and said, I'm the manna that came down from heaven. If you eat what I'm giving you, you will live. If you eat what I'm going to be sharing with you here on Family Restored every Saturday at 1130 p.m. Eastern, if you eat what God has given me to give you, even to the fivefold ministries, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, the enemy has gotten in that particular uh, uh, function of the body of Christ and has caused a lot of disturbances and malice and jealousy. If you would eat what I'm sharing with you, I believe that God would explode upon your ministry, even during this time, that if you would just simply say, listen, I need to hear what this vessel is saying. As I said, many have taken the gifts of God and have made merchandise like Simeon in the book of Acts. Many have taken it like the sons of Sceva who wanted to cast out evil spirits. And the evil spirit says, Jesus I know, Paul I know, I know. Apostle Paul, they knew Apostle Paul. 
They knew Jesus, but they asked the questions to these boys, these sons of one named Sceva. Who are you? I want to ask you a question. Who are you? Who are you? I believe in this time that there is an anointing that's being released. There's a reintroduction to who you are. Some of you never met you. Some of you really don't know who you are. You have summed up who you are through religion. Maybe you're a preacher, maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you were raised in the church and you have, believe it or not, you have gotten a personality from that upbringing. Nothing wrong with being brought up in the church. Nothing wrong with it. However, listen, many have gotten their personalities from being raised up in church. You learned how to shout. Come on, I love you. You learned how to dance. You learned how to sing. You learned how to, to, to say certain words that will start a turn up in church, a, a turn out and shout and a dance. And you learned how to say something and testify until people feel it. And many times they didn't feel God. They felt you. I love you. I promise I do. Many times they didn't feel God. They felt you. Many of you learned how to testify and speak of what God has done for you and start the organ playing and start the drums playing and you had a, a howdy, howdy time and you left those services without being serviced by the Holy Spirit. I believe, I know, that the time has come where there's a changing. There's a changing. I'm telling you, the change is here. And even many of you have been raised to hate. I'm going to be dealing with malice. Many of you have been raised to hate. Many of you have been enabled. And many of you have, 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 have taken on the spirit of gossip and gang saying, and yet, you're operating in your ministry. You're evangelizing, you're teaching, and you're preaching, you're prophesying. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Have you stopped your perfection because you, you've taken your gifts and you begin to operate in those gifts and now you are in a demand, if you will, and, and you, as you went on, you spend less time in worship, less time in consecration. Consecration, what does it mean? It means set aside for sacred use. So you went forth. And you were exercising what God has given you. And in the midst of that, you might have forgot God. You've been so busy for God until you didn't have time for God. Is that you? If it is, I've been sent to you. Maybe you have gotten used to raising money and you have used your gift. And you have became well known and you became worldwide. And you have used your gift. I, and you thought about the necessities of the bills of the ministry. You thought about the necessity of your church and, and the money part of your church and the business at hand and the bills that are due. And maybe you have mixed God's gift in tithing offerings. Maybe you forgot that tithing, it means a remnant. Maybe you forgot the order of tithing was, was after you win, the, the kings would win a war and they would bring the rewards of that war and they would give a tithing. Maybe you forgot the principle of Abraham 
and Melchizedek. Maybe you forgot that tithing means remnant, you. And have taken the tithing and have done like King Solomon, put task, hard taxation on the people. And people began to, in your church, give out of obligation. What God is saying in this time, he's going to bring restructure. He's bringing balance to the ministries. He's taking the church from church to kingdom. We have no other choice now. The power of God that's about to be released is going to be as a result of people, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, being willing to move from church to kingdom. This is why so many uh, in the music area of our churches and ministries, it, it, uh, it became uh, entertainment. You know, the word says, listen closely, as a minstrel myself, as a musician, but I've received it divinely. And God spoke to me. He said, listen, tell the musicians, tell the singers, they've forgotten me in their songs. They have forgotten to sing unto me a new song. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. The word says, sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. It doesn't mean new lyrics. It means new relationship. Two people can sing Amazing Grace. One can sing it because they know how to sing. Another can sing the same song, same lyrics, but have a relationship. They understand that they're singing unto God. They understand that God is amazing grace. They went through stuff that has brought the reality of amazing grace. The other fella is just singing because they know how to hit the tunes. They know how to sing. So it is with prophets. Many have prophesied out of a gift. They have raised big offerings out of a gift. But the gift that's never turned into a relationship is no longer a gift. It's an if. Why? Many have iffies, iffy anointings, borrowed oil. I love you. Are you living off of borrowed oil? I want to help you. Let me show you something. The spirit of malice is an envious, murdering spirit. I read something that I want to read to you. It says malice is the devil's picture. Lust makes men brutish. Malice makes them devilish. Listen, it is mental murder. That's by T. Wilson. Mental murder. Is the enemy trying to murder your family through malice and envy and hatred? Is the enemy trying to tear up your, your marriage through malice, envy, and hatred? Many women in the, in, the, in the local churches and churches abroad have worshipped their pastor and praised their pastor but did not praise their own husbands and function in the area that God has told them to function at home.
Many men have saw an opportunity and have used the fact that women are sensitive. They have preached great messages that will move women emotionally. And when you get that emotion moving, you can raise a big offering. I rebuke it. Listen, listen, listen. I rebuke it. Here's, here's, here's what God is saying. Turn away from those manufactured religious fivefold ministries. Let me say it. Let me say it. Turn away from the man-made fivefold ministries. Turn away from it. You can get a counterfeit apostle. You can get a counterfeit prophet. You can get a counterfeit evangelist, a counterfeit pastor, and a counterfeit teacher. And instead of being perfected, the only thing that will be perfected are your gifts, are your flesh. Let me read this to you. Ephesians chapter 4. Listen to this. Verse 1 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you, beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Watch this. Endeavoring to keep, watch this, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You cannot have unity of the spirit unless you have peace. This is why the enemy uses this narcissistic nature. Listen, that's in every family. Every family have, have someone that the enemy will use that has the spirit of malice and envy to destroy that family. And the first thing you would notice, the enemy will destroy the peace. You see, he can't conquer a family unless he conquers the peace. Now, I'm not talking about quiet. I'm not talking about man's peace. You know, the word says, Christ said, the real Christ said, Peace I leave with you. And then he said, not as the world giveth. I'm going to give you a peace that you can get from the world system. But this peace is talking about a peace that passeth understanding. In your family, you will notice. And don't think about the person because the person is not the enemy. Some people are sensitive and prone to be used in a narcissistic nature because their spirits are weak. And when a person is weak, they sometimes will want authority. And this is how you could tell a weak leader. They want praise. They want people to speak well of them. Mm-hmm. They want to draw to people that they can control. Let me tell you something about God. I love you. God does not seek control. I know we have songs in the past that says he's in control. I, I know it's said, I love you, but God is not in control. If he was, you wouldn't see stuff like you seen. But what God is, listen, God is sovereign. You see, when you own everything, when you own the galaxies and the millions of planets and stars and, 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 and the other lives that are in other places, not just here on earth, I know we people on earth just think we're all that. But God is too big to just do one thing in one place alone. <sighs> I love you, 
But listen, God is sovereign. When you own everything, you don't seek control. Man does that. That's why we have bigotry, racism, hatred, evil, hating people simply because they don't look like you, and even hating those that, dis that look like you that disagree with you. So you have white supremacy, black supremacy, Mexican supremacy, Puerto Rican supremacy, African supremacy. You get every race on the planet, I'll show you an element of supremacy. I love you. Listen, God does not seek control. What God does, he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen, y'all, every Saturday at this time, you're going to be uh, seeing a different administration. Now, I want to share with you. You can, you can follow me on Facebook, Roderick Owensby. And you can and just, just see what God is doing. There's going to be a lot of things happening on this network. I'm so happy to be a part of your lives. Remember, stay away from malice. I got more to tell you. Stay tuned. I'm Roger Gornsby. Next Saturday, this same time, I'll see you there. Love you. Faith is not necessarily knowing what God will do, but faith is a divine ability to believe. Faith is the sense, the sense, to have enough sense, the sense, heal, shout. You know what doubt is? Insecurity. Faith works by love. Your faith can never rise above your love. You will never have great faith until you have great love. Faith works by love. Oh, shout hallelujah. Some of you don't have great faith because you're too, you're too stingy.